Hello everyone, welcome to Waterline. My name is Esconce. And I'm Bogsy. We're here to talk to you about some new content coming to our game. So what is the roadmap and how does the team go about getting it done? The World of Warships is a multifaceted game. So while the core gameplay consists of the ships that we play and the maps where we battle, there are many things happening behind the scenes for the future of the game. Now, different teams are responsible for each of them. And they each work on various improvements and innovations to constantly refresh the game, keep it up to date, and keep new content in the works. Now, as we shared with you in February, the development roadmap is based on the plans of the different teams all working together to give you an idea of what's being prepared for the game in the future. Why are some features postponed? In February, we only told you about the plans for six months ahead. Why didn't we tell you about the whole year at once? This is primarily because longer term plans may shift. And we don't want to announce something that, in theory, could be delayed for a few updates when expectations have already been formed. So why might long term plans shift? Well, several factors can affect this. For example, large and complex features are being developed. It's difficult to predict exactly the timing of it. Now, writing and optimizing its code, and code is a complex and serious thing, Checking it through Q&A and fixing bugs may require much more time and resources than originally planned. Moreover, the concept has shown that it needs to be improved or significantly changed, which also affects the timing. Now, long-term innovations and improvements that are in the early stages of design are therefore rarely 100% secured for a particular update and can be postponed. For a big game like World of Warships, this is normal. The main thing is to continue to delight you with full and rich updates every month. And that's what we're going to do. What has been done already? We've made almost everything we'd announced back in February. In terms of ships and branches, we've got the Pan-Asian cruisers, Italian DDs in early access, and a new nation, Spain, with its first representative, the Canarius. The Kurfurst and the Habarovs have been replaced in the tech tree. Super ships have appeared as well, and submarine testing continues. In terms of events, we took part in the Lunar New Year, the Dirigible Derby, the Atlantico Dockyard, Savage Battles. In terms of visual improvements, we've got new effects. We've got shadows, we've got snow and ice improvements on the decks of your ships. And we've had the opportunity to rework some of the mats all the way to HD quality. So what awaits us in the spring and summer of 2022? We'd like to tell you a little bit about what you can expect from these time periods. Ships and branches that are coming to the game. We have French heavy cruisers. We're going to be having early access to uh, these new French heavy cruisers based on the Dunkirk line. The French cruisers were already announced in February, and the details should all be on the development blog, so go back and take a look. Early access to these ships was also announced in April in update 11.4, which will be released on the main server shortly. Now, you can read about these ships in the 11.4 development bulletin and in the development blog. British battle cruisers, which have already been announced in the dev blog, the addition of British battlecruisers to the game for testing is announced in update 0.11.4. These are representatives of a certain subclass of battleships in our game, which can be referred to as battlecruisers. The early access to the second branch of British battleships will begin in update 0.11.6. For the list of ships, we have the Indefatigable. In Indefatigable. Well, we also have the Queen Mary, the Tiger, the Renown, the Rook, the Hawk, the Duncan, and the St. Vincent. Tiers three through six ships are historically built ships, and the rest are based on various Royal Navy designs from the first half of the 20th century. For their guns and their calibers, they range from 305 millimeters at tier three, all the way up to 457 millimeters at tier 10. So the new British battle cruisers will have the following concept. They will be mainly battleships for medium and close range combat. The British BB projectiles will have reduced fuse delay on their AP shells, but the tier 10 has a solid caliber of 18 inch guns, 457 millimeter. And numerous and rapid firing secondaries will start to show up at the higher tiers, while torpedo tubes, and eh, we're still not sure exactly where they're gonna start, will have high levels of damage, and the tier 10 will have very comfortable launch angles uh, on the torpedoes in the forward direction of movement. Now, the British battle cruisers will be fast ships, and starting at tier six, they're gonna have the improved engine settings similar to the British light cruisers or the incomparable. They're gonna have good concealment, like battle cruisers tend to do, but weak armor. They will, however, have a reinforced deck against high explosives the way that the other British heavy cruisers do. For the consumables, you can expect to see DFAA, engine boost, repair party, and advanced repair parties that repair up to 60% of the damage done while still only doing 10% of Citadel damage. 
We also plan to release the St. Lawrence, the equivalent of the St. Vincent, to test another battleship concept. Now, the St. Lawrence will be a long-range battleship with main guns effective against all ship classes. It'll have standard AP shells as opposed to short fuse AP, powerful HE shells like the ones on the first line of British battleships, and very high accuracy and good range. This might feel a little bit more like the Repulse to you. They'll also have numerous and rapid-firing secondaries along with torpedo tubes that have high damage and comfortable launch angles from the torpedoes in the direction of travel. For consumables, expect to see engine boosts, defensive fire AA, and the standard repair party. No enhanced engine options or reinforced deck are going to be on the St. Lawrence. It should have good concealment, relatively weak armor. Submarine testing is now ongoing. We've planned and already announced a new set of improvements to balance them out. Improving interaction with surface ships and preparing subs as much as possible for a full-fledged addition to the game. As soon as we have more details on the future fate of the class, we'll be sure to share them with you. Sea Battle comes to World of Warships. We always strive to delight you with new and interesting activities. And one of these new activities will be Sea Battle, based on a classic game that everyone's familiar with. Have you heard of Battleship? In this activity, we'll offer players a new and unique way of obtaining a thematic resource and various rewards. The principles will be as follows. You're going to complete combat missions and receive a special resource, passes to participate in the sea battle. You'll receive several passes at once for completing the missions, which means you're not going to have to return to the missions after uh, each sea battle game. Players will go to a separate sea battle tab in the armory. They spend one pass to participate in sea battle and begin arranging their ships. They click the battle button. The player plays against an AI, receiving rewards for destroying ships during the game. There's also a special reward for victory. The rewards can be specially themed resources, tokens for early access to ships, as well as various other assets. And before or during the game, a player can press the End Combat Automatically button. In this case, the battle for the player will be ended immediately by the AI. The player will see the results of the battle on the screen and receive all the rewards that are due. The player may also exit in the middle of the battle. This progress will be retained. Convoys first appeared on the main server as a separate battle type in Update 0.10.8. It was very well received by players, and we are pleased to announce that a second iteration of this battle awaits you. In comparison to 0.10.8, we've made the following changes. Battles will take place in a 12 on 12 format on updated maps with new routes. Now on the map, there'll be two or even three routes of convoys to the same or different destinations. This will increase the variability of the game for both attack and escort teams while offering new tactics. At the same time, the number of ships in the convoy for each route is reduced accordingly, so as not to complicate the life of the attack team and not to have problems with the client performance in battle. We also plan to make various interface improvements update hints and more so that players get a better understanding of the new type of combat. United States destroyer models are being updated. In the summer, we'll traditionally celebrate US Independence Day. There'll be plenty of themed content waiting for you, but the highlight will be an update of the US destroyer models. The US Destroyer Models update will cover two versions. Firstly, we're going to update models of researchable destroyers from Tier 7 until 10. Then, we'll update the models of Tiers 2 through 6 researchable destroyers, as well as the premium destroyer Sims, since work on her started at the same time with the researchable ships. Puerto Rico Dockyard. The Atlantico Dockyard will not be the last opportunity this year to build a ship. Next dockyard starts at the end of the summer, and this time we have decided to bring back the pioneer of the dockyard, Puerto Rico. The very first dockyard where the Puerto Rico was built was very complex and far from being the most in terms of both mechanics, design, and perception. We know. After that, we redesigned the dockyard. We took all the mistakes into account, and as all subsequent iterations of this event, starting with Odin, have shown, the dockyard is, is pretty cool, and its current format is perceived pretty well. Therefore, we're ready to return Puerto Rico back to the shipyard and give those who didn't manage to build a ship uh, in the New Year update of 0.8.11 or came to the game later the opportunity to do so now. In doing so, getting a ship will be much easier than in the first iteration of the dockyard of Puerto Rico, but it won't be available for free, just like the previous dockyard ships. Now, for those of you who already have the Puerto Rico in your port and you're still gonna build the Puerto Rico this time around in the dockyard, there will be compensation for the ship. 
At the moment, the plan is to give a token, which can be exchanged for a bundle with one of the types of resources of your choice. Doubloons, steel, coal, or research bureau points. The amount of these resources will be enough to buy a tier 10 ship of your choice for that resource. Now, it's worth noting that the decision as to which resource bundles will be available is not final yet. The return of operations. As we said before, the rework of carriers resulted in many internal instruments associated with AI becoming outdated. Accordingly, working on aircraft carriers controlled by it has become difficult and kind of impossible. Because of this, some old operations were temporarily removed from our game. We've been working on the AI of aircraft carriers to bring some of those old operations back into the game, such as Cherry Blossom, Hermes, and The Ultimate Frontier. We're also looking at improving the gameplay and operations. Final information will be available closer to the release of the updates when the plan is to bring operations back to the main server. Stay tuned. Personal challenges. In future updates, new iterations of personal challenges await you, for which we have planned a number of different improvements. There'll be more class nation categories in which to complete missions, and it includes the early access ships. Other mission conditions will be a certain amount of ribbons, dealing an amount of damage, or perhaps a total amount of experience. New map. As we mentioned before at the beginning of February, we'll be adding a new map, the Faroe Islands, whose visual style might be familiar to you because it was chosen by you. The new map will be therefore appearing in 11.5. Let's move on to containers. Some of you have pointed out that when your container barges get full of over 100 or more containers, weird stuff starts happening. Like sometimes you can't really control which container you open. So we've decided to introduce a few new mechanics that are gonna help you sort, identify, and sort of look through your containers a little bit more easily. Uh, so now what's gonna be able to happen is basically you're gonna be able to see how many containers you have of each type, decide which ones you wanna open and when. So I can save up my super containers? You basically can save up your super containers. Nice. Are you a super container enjoyer? I'm, I've enjoyed a few. You know, I'm somewhat of a super container connoisseur myself. <laughs> so we originally wanted to roll this out to you guys in spring. But as you may have heard, our container barge got stuck in the Panama Canal. It was there for a while and then there for a while longer. So it'll be showing up sometime, probably in summer, I would say. we're going to be adding training missions for new players. An important aspect of game development is helping newcomers to master the basic principles and the game mechanics of World of Warships. That's why we plan to add a simple set of missions to help a new player get accustomed to the game. There will be a different set of hints for each mission, which will allow a player to better orientate themselves to our game. This is another new feature which carried over from the spring as we needed more time to finalize the design. Separating exteriors and economic bonuses. We've released a dev blog already, but we're separating exteriors from economic bonuses. This allows you to pick what camo you want to rock so you look your best on the high seas. As for the economic bonuses, they're going to be comparable to what you have now, but it's going to be changed in that you're only going to pick one at a time. You can choose to boost your credits, your total experience, your free experience, or your commander experience. As well, if you have a permanent camouflage, the economic bonuses will always apply to your ship. We have changes coming to the combat camera. Not so long ago, we announced the new stage of testing of combat camera settings in our dev blog. We are pleased to report that the testing has yielded positive results. After minor tweaks based on the test results and your feedback, we will implement changes to the main server on one of the summer updates. Some details about these changes. A configurable field of view option, which will allow for an increased viewing angle, an adjustment to the height and distance of the camera relative to the player's ship. The camera position when using binoculars remains unchanged in both cases, however. To make navigation easier when aiming torpedoes, the camera will zoom out when switching to this armament type. We've also added an option to switch between the standard aiming view and the aerial view when the spotting aircraft consumable is active, as it was kind of confusing for some people. Currently, it can be awkward to aim at the close range targets when this consumable is active due to the elevated camera position. 
so the ability to switch to the lower standard view mode on demand will provide convenient if a threat appears nearby. The camera position when the aerial view is active remains unchanged and can still be useful against distant targets, however. What's new in less details? Fall 2022. There are many new features and improvements in the plans for autumn 2022. They're still in the preliminary design stage, so we can't give you too many details. We'll only tell you about the most notable things. Japanese light cruisers, long requested and finally bound for a port near you. We don't have the specifics yet to talk about these, but we do know the gun sizes. 152 millimeter guns for the tier five and six, 155s for tier seven, and dual purpose 150 millimeter guns for tiers eight through 10. Goodbye, planes. And 610 millimeter torpedoes for the whole branch. Those tubes will have a large sector in which they can launch in for a nice, comfortable attack. 610 millimeter torpedoes are so much better than 608s, don't you think? <laughs> Two millimeters bigger. Doom. <laughs> I think it's time to talk about birthdays. This year, our favorite game will be seven years old, and we have lots of themed rewards and interesting activities for you to take part in, including snowflakes. Now, it's come to our attention that many of you have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, lots. lots of ships in your ports. So we understand that it might be a little easier if you could, I don't know, say, knock off a couple snowflakes at once. That'd be a dream. That would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. No longer a dream, because we've come up with some interesting ways in which we think you can get you guys to get a couple snowflakes at once, so stay tuned. For Halloween this year, we're gonna be bringing back Sunray in the Darkness and Saving Transylvania. Players have loved both of these operations and look forward to seeing them again. Also, we're considering adding Terror of the Deep back. That comes with submarines. Terror of the Deep! <laughs> it was highly reviewed when it came out, and I would love to have a chance to play it because that was slightly before my time. As for a new map, number two. In addition to the Faroe Islands, we plan to start working on another map. At the moment, it's in a preliminary design stage, so we don't have any details in specific, but we will give you progress on the new map later when we're ready. Thank you all for sticking with us through this entire section. We appreciate it. My name has been Bogsy. My name is Ascons, and thank you for joining us for Waterline.